I'm sure we've covered this before, but just as as, as again, a little a little aside, a little power cleanser, shall we say, from, from the general election. And bear in mind, there's still two weeks to go, so don't worry. I'm sure, I'm sure that any moment Rishi Sunak is about to do, you know, something ridiculous, or the Conservatives are going to do something stupid, or there'll be some new conservative scandal to cover. However, I want to talk more about local stuff. Because if there's one thing in particular as becoming more and more of a buzzword, that is localism. More and more people really want a bigger say what goes on in their local constituency. And whenever I've heard this, this argument, I've always turned around and gone, well, when was the last time you went to your you know, local council meeting? You know, have you have you read you know the <laughs> the reports uh, that the that the council put out about the the minutes of the last local council meeting? Have you have you read them? And bear in mind, I do live in what is a very very strong Labour area. Most of the of the councillors are you know are Labour, and I can guarantee you this happens in any council because. <laughs> Regardless of whether it is conservative control, Lib Dem control, etc., you can you can already know the exact same story. What I'm going to hear that oh, the council is just out for themselves, they're corrupt, etc., etc. And yet, even when I've heard quote the stories about said councillor being corrupt, etc., etc., I've gone well, okay, go to the police. Like if if councillor so and so is corrupt, take your evidence and go to the police. Get it investigated. Has have we ever had in my constituency an investigation into the the corruption of of the Labour Council in Barnsley? No, because most of the people trying to spread this nonsense, believe it or not, are you kippers. <laughs> Oh well, former UKIPers, uh, Brexit Party reform people as they are now, um, trying to sort of spend the same sort of nonsense all the time. That if you, you know, give give you know the the Labour Council all this power, they'll run rough shot. They'll do all this stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yet, here's the interesting thing: one of the big bonus points I think we have really in our you know, in, in my town is we've got the Bonzi Chronicle. It's a it's a local newspaper. But there are other places that aren't so lucky. Uh, other towns, other other sort of places, they've lost their local newspaper. And even the Bonzi Chronicle struggling to hang on. It's having to more and more digitize its offering. It's really having to really lean in to a lot of like new media stuff. That it that it's had to do in the past couple of you know past couple of years, even to try and survive. So it is doing everything it can to sort of hang on in there. I think it will survive, but hey, its circulation is down. And in the twenty nine in the twenty nineteen general election, everyone got really really annoyed at the Barnes and Chronicle because the Conservatives paid for like a front page wraparound advert around the Chronicle uh, to go out. And and you know, to get people to vote conservative, and their the, the Chronicle's response was at the time, "Hey, look, we were offered quite a significant sum of money to do that." You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, local newspapers are a business, and to do local journalism, in fact, to do any real proper journalism, you have to have money. You know, the Guardian to afford its stuff that it has to do has to get money. The BBC has the license fee, but even then, that money comes from, you know, taxpayer stuff. ITV, Channel 4, a cracking example of, of Channel 4 and the journalism that they've done over the past couple of years has come off the back of, well, you know, it comes off the back of the advertising that Channel 4 sells to advertisers. And one thing in particular was a really, really good article in The Guardian about this. And it was called News Deserts. News Deserts. Uh, sorry. If my local newspapers are dying, will democracy die with them? 
And I thought that was a fascinating question to ask. If you lose local newspapers who predominantly are covering things from like a local constituency angle, going to the courts, covering all kinds of stuff that never would ever make it in a month of Sundays to a to a national newspaper. You know, what then happens and how does, you know, local councils or councillors then get hauled to account? How do we how do we know when when something happens? Well, of course, this is when Facebook sort of starts to rear its head. Now, just last year, over a year ago, there was a again, if if you're in Barnsley, you know uh the pub that I'm talking about. Uh, and this pub or pubs got closed down. And uh, the owner went on a massive campaign to sort of try and get this reversed, saying that he was being done in by, by the council, that it was all the council's fault. And then, of course, came out in the local newspaper, um, oh, hadn't been paying his rent. <laughs> and the whole furore that had built up suddenly disappeared because of that Chronicle article. So if Facebook is to maybe even replace some local news in, in some areas, we have to take it how good and how bad is it going to be. Social media might be a good place initially to, you know, maybe get some news here and there, but eventually you will and will need to go to consult a better news source. And if you've got a local newspaper and you want your local news, well, you know, you go to your local newspaper. Just as if you want national news, you'd go to, you know, a national source. And I think very, very more than more than often than now, we should be incredibly skeptical of seeing what stuff gets shared on, on social media. Very skeptical. And it's becoming more and more hard to sort of discern what's those true and not true stories that do appear on on social media i'm pretty sure people have their own local stories again be very interested to know your own local stories from your area what what you've got uh, on your so you say on your local beat um but again it's it's local news and i think it does raise an interesting point that if we do see the loss of these local newspapers does this end up you know, damaging local democracy. And in that Guardian article, there was a very good quote. Let me get it. Because I thought this really does sum it up, that yes, it is going to have a negative impact on, you know, your local, local democracy. So here it is. So in 2020, the government commission research found that a positive and significant correlation between the daily circulation of local newspapers and local election turnout. So there's a correlation between the circulation of local newspapers and local election turnout. I remember local elections in particular, when we've talked about them, in some places, if you got 200, 300 votes, you're suddenly the new councillor of that area. Congratulations. It does not take a lot of votes to get elected to a, a local council. Um, shockingly so, especially when you see the turnout rates. Uh, you know, you're looking at, at some places 25, 26%. Nationally, I think it's not 30%. I think it might be like 28, 29, I think, off the top of my head. I can't exactly remember it now. But, yeah, they're bad. They're really bad. <laughs> and yet, this asks bigger problems about what we need to do about sort of local councils. Do we need to sort of really take a good look at local councils? Do we need to change them? How can we change them for the better? What can we do to get more people interested in, in local democracy? How can we improve turnouts at you know, local council meetings. I've been saying for years, for years, 
that local councils should be streaming their council meetings. Now, some are recorded, but even then, you know, and I challenge you on this, go to your local council website and look for for where you can get your the minutes of the last council meeting because, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, some council websites are so labyrinthian it's it's it takes a while to actually find you know what you're what you actually want uh but again that is a problem i think of lack of council funding and sort of you know trying to sort of create a good effective website that anyone can use but that's a that's a topic for another time but as always uh thank you very much for watching and of course as always we'll see you all next time